Hi again. We've done two previous segments on Johnny Cash's autobiography written with Patrick Carr. This is chapter six where Johnny deals with his life in the 70s as he tried to get his spiritual foundation after escaping the the drugs that had plagued his life even while he was successfully touring. The recovery and the withdrawal from those drugs was very, very difficult. He's got his life together in the early 70s and he tells you how he went about feeding himself during those early years and what has stayed with him in the way of habits, good habits, over the decades since, because this book comes out in the late 19. 90s. You could say that the heart of this old house is in my personal private library. And you could say, too, that Pop Carter, that is June Carter's dad, Pop Carter's books are the heart of that library. He began passing them along to me in the late 1960s, one by one, like trail guides to the new paths I was taking. And I still use them on my voyages of discovery today. The deeper into them I go, the more I find to hold in my hand and ponder, and the more to reach for on another day. An endlessly absorbing journey, rich beyond my most ambitious imagining. They're in the spirituality section of my library, next to my history and Americana, Americana shelves. The Life of Christ by Fleetwood, and the same title by Farrer, that is F.W. Farrer we've talked about here before. The Life and Acts of Paul the Apostle by Connie Bear and Housen. Interestingly, he spells their names wrong, but I know what book he's talking about. Connie Bear and Housen, classic, The Life and Acts of Paul the Apostle. Lang's whole set of Bible commentaries. That's also from the Victorian era, by the way. About 30 volumes. Various books on various aspects of the Holy Land. Its history, its archaeology, its horticulture, and many others in a similar vein. They're all showing their age, and they have that old book smell, which you'd expect since the very newest of them date from before Pop Carter's death, more than 20 years ago now. But they're not dusty. I read them. I never tire of learning about the lives and times of the early Christians, the customs and traditions of the Palestinian Jews, the politics of the Roman Empire, and the trials of Christ's church in its first century. I've often found strength in the faith and courage of some of those early church fathers who kept the word alive for us and refused to reject the gospel in the face of torture and execution. Pop Carter was the one who really got me going on Bible study. I liked him a great deal and learned a great deal from him in the days after I came out of Nickajack Cave. A self-taught theologian and dedicated scholar, he was also a warm and caring man with a lot of good common sense, and he made a great instructor and discussion partner, feeding and stimulating the hunger for spiritual truths that led me, after a while, into more formal Bible scholarship through correspondence courses. June and I both enrolled in a study program, and for three years we spent much of our time on airplanes, in hotels, and on the bus doing our lessons. We both graduated. I can't speak for June, but for me, experience with was both both exciting and humbling i learned just enough to understand that i knew almost nothing i believe that god's will for me is that i be content even happy and i know from experience that i'm happiest when i'm closest to him so it's no mystery why bible study pleases me so it's one of the ways i get to the well I don't feel any shame about my past today, but I do have some regrets about the time I've wasted. And one of the ways I work on that is to have a Bible next to me when I turn my TV on. I'm a channel surfer, so I flip through whatever's on, looking for something that grabs me, usually on A&E, CNN, PBS, the Discovery Channel, or the History Channel. But I've trained myself to turn the TV off right away if I don't find anything, and pick up my Bible, either the Old King James or the New International Version. I find a passage in one version that intrigues me and pick up the other to see how it's worded there. Then I chase it down in one or more of the commentaries until I find what it really means. Once I learn what the Bible is, the inspired Word of God, most of it anyway, 
the writing became precious to me and endlessly intriguing. Every scripture has a realistic interpretation, but finding its spiritual interpretation is truly exciting. Sometimes I'm, I'll suddenly understand that something I've been hearing all my life has a deeper, more beautiful meaning than I'd ever realized. That's a thrill. And more. Usually at such moments, I've just learned something new about how we humans are, how we humans are, are and how to live in this world. Here at Bon Aqua, or at home in Hendersonville, I start most of my mornings with coffee, then CNN, and then the Bible and that sets me up for a good day. On the road, the habit is harder to keep, but usually I have a King James by my side on the bus, and wherever I am, I have my Franklin electronic Bible in my briefcase. That's a wonderful tool. Just punch in what you're looking for, hit enter, and there's the scripture you want. I'm the spokesman for that product, and anything good you hear me say about it, you can believe. At home, my most used tool is the Thompson chain reference system. One can only speculate how jubilant Johnny Cash would be today with all that's available through internet. These days the man I go to for advice and inspiration in Bible study is Jack Shaw, a friend who's a minister in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Sometimes we talk for a long time. Sometimes I call him and just say, hey Jack, what's the good word for today? And he reads me a scripture he's been thinking about and sends me off to chase it down in the commentaries. He's by no means the only man of God who's helped me over the years. The Reverend John Colbaugh, now preaching in Louisiana, became a close friend and anchor in the storm during my first years in Hendersonville. The Reverend Harry Yates, my sister Joanne's husband, is a great man to talk to on matters of the Spirit, and so is Joanne herself. She's earned a master's degree in theology in recent years. And, of course, the Reverend Jimmy Snow, to whose Nashville congregation June and I belong for several years, was and is a great preacher and teacher. It seems to me that God has always sent such people into my life just when I needed them. If Sam Phillips at Sun Records and George Bates at the Home Equipment Company back in my Memphis days were angels in disguise, my Reverend friends have been angels in the open, obvious even to me. I put in a link to my backstory. Uh, leaving the Watchtower could have been a lot worse than it was for me, and it was worse, much worse for my wife, and I think, I fear, for most others who leave the Watchtower. My video testimony, though, is entitled How I Left the Watchtower and Landed S Softly. See you soon.